Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a horror mystery films from 2021, titled Fear Street Part 3 1666. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. This film is the third and last film of the Fear Street trilogy. If you haven't seen the first two, I suggest you either watch my recaps prior to viewing this video because you would not understand anything otherwise. Now, let's begin. At the beginning of the film, Dina finds herself transported to year 1666. She is now seeing and living the world through Sarah Fierre's eyes. Sarah Fierre hears her name get called and returns to the barn, where her brother Henry is cradling their farrowing so. One piglet is breached, and Sarah Fierre pulls out her knife to save it. Two. To everyone's relief, it is a successful birth. The sow is safe and sound, and the piglets are healthy. Sarah announces to her father that she's going to give away one of the piglets to Solomon Good, a good friend of hers who lives just outside Union and had just recently lost his wife and child to an illness. Her father suggests that she should marry Solomon Good, but she playfully brushes it aside. Sarah Fierre exits her house and roams the streets of their town, Union, where she comes across her friends, Lizzie, Isaac, and Abigail. It appears that the young people have come up with a secret password, to signify that they're going to hold a bonfire in the woods tonight. Sarah Fierre's then meets Hannah Miller, the pastor's daughter. To her surprise, Hannah is coming to the bonfire too. Not only that, she asks Sarah to come with her and Lizzie, to fetch berries for the bonfire at the infamous widow's house in the woods. The two gush around each other and it is clear that they're in love. They are interrupted by Hannah's mother, Goody Miller, who despises Sarah. Sarah resumes on her way, but is stopped by the town's drunk, Mad Thomas, who teases her by drunkenly slurring that he sees the darkness in her. Beware, Sarah Fear. Sarah Fear ventures through the woods until she reaches Solomon Good's house, where two graves lie in his front yard. The two are close friends and the piglet is a gift of condolences for the recent passing of Solomon's wife and child. Solomon tells her that he's trying to rise from this tragedy by growing crops in this patch of land he owns, but he is yet to grow a healthy crop. At sundown, Sarah Fierre, Lizzie, and Hannah Miller sneak away to the woods to retrieve the berries for the bonfire. On their way, they gossip about the widow's house they're going to. Word of the town is, the widow is a witch who worships the devil. However, Sarah Fierre isn't one to believe in witchcraft, so she tells them that the truth is, the widow simply fell in love with a Native American and the townsfolk exiled her for it. They reach the widow's house to find it empty. An ominous air can be felt, but the young women proceed to search around for the berries they want anyway. Sarah then finds a book and begins going through the pages. It is clear that there is something sinister about the book. She finds a page containing the names of different demons, and absent-mindedly reads it out loud. Suddenly, Don't. Widow Mary has returned home. She menacingly warns Sarah that the devil lives in that book, and because Sarah had just read it out loud, the devil senses her now. Hannah walks in, and the widow crudely tells the young women to get out. Somewhere in the woods, the bonfire has started. Sarah, Lizzie, and Hannah arrive just in time to share the berries with their friends. It has special properties and gets them all high. The young people dance and chatter around the fire, while Sarah Fierre and Hannah Miller keep their gazes on each other, until they are rudely interrupted by a young man named Caleb. Caleb is aroused, and he wants Hannah to satisfy his needs. Luckily, Sarah Fierre steps in. She embarrasses Caleb in front of everyone by pointing out that he has a heart on. She then takes Hannah away from the party, into the woods. They rest by a rock and Hannah tucks a piece of red moss behind her ear. At this moment, they passionately make love with each other, until they are interrupted by rustling noises coming from the woods. Knowing that they're in deep trouble if they get caught, they run back into town. Hannah reminds her that if people in Union find out about them, they'll hang them. But Sarah isn't afraid, because she's deeply in love and Hannah is the only person who makes her feel alive. They kiss before parting ways, unaware of the fact that Mad Thomas is drinking nearby and saw the kiss. Later that night, as Sarah gets ready for bed, Mary Boy, her dog jumps on and she lovingly holds him as she goes to bed. In the morning, 
Sarah wakes up and starts her day by trying to find Mary Boy, but he is nowhere to be found. Mary Boy? Sarah? <sighs> Hannah Miller has come to Sarah's house, looking distraught. She takes Sarah to her house and claims that something is wrong with her father, the town's pastor. Sarah Fier is convinced that Pastor Miller is simply ill and needs proper medicine. Hannah then informs her that she's not allowed to see Sarah anymore, because her mother suspects the love affair between them. Hannah appears deeply torn, and she asks Sarah if it's possible that what's happening to her father is God's punishment for their sin. Sarah takes her hand to comfort her, but then... Goody Miller slaps Hannah, and begins ranting about how mad Thomas saw the two of them kiss last night and he's told everyone in town. Goody Miller accuses Sarah of corrupting her daughter and throws her out. Sarah realizes that everyone in town is staring at her. She returns home, where she finds her father looking solemn. Her father has heard of the rumor too, and begins saying that he didn't raise her right, and that he's always suspected the strangeness within her. He leaves the room with contempt. Sarah tries to go about her day despite everything. She carries a bag of flour to the kitchen, but finds something strange, all the food has been spoiled. She pours the bag of flour, and finds that it's infested with maggots. Henry then calls for her to check out the barn, where she finds a disturbingly bloody view, the sow has eaten all of her piglets. Deeply disturbed, Sarah asks Henry to fetch the axe. She then slays the sow while Henry retches. Later that day, Sarah finds her confidence wavering. She goes into town and finds that everyone's food is spoiled, and animals have gone out of control. Blind to the, horrors the townsfolk are gathered by the well, saying that the bucket's caught on something, while Mad Thomas stands in the crowd, preaching about how all these bad things are happening because of the townsfolk's sins. The men finally manage to pull the bucket up. It is Sarah Fier's dog, Mary Boy. Sarah is now palpably distressed. Meanwhile, Mad Thomas begins preaching about how the devil has come, and suggests that someone in union is to blame for this. In the afternoon, Sarah busies herself by doing chores around the house, right when Solomon Good arrives to hand her a gift. He senses there's something wrong, and she decides to tell him everything that has been happening. Sarah confides in him about how she's now starting to think that maybe it really is her that summoned the devil to this town, and that maybe she really was born strange and wicked, especially because she's in love with Hannah Miller. Hearing this confession, Solomon looks hurt because he has feelings for her, but he remains on her side regardless. He tells her that although he does see that something strange is going on with the town, there is no way it is her fault, because he does not believe one can summon the devil by chance. To do so, you must willingly extend your hand to him. Upon hearing the scream, they rush to the source, where they find the townsfolk panicking outside the church. Apparently, Pastor's Miller has locked himself inside with the children. Solomon rushes to the side door, and with the help of several men, they begin slamming themselves against the door until it breaks open. He then advises everyone to stay back, before entering the church alone with a pitchfork. As he enters, Solomon finds a stack of human organs on the floor and as he takes a closer look, discovers that it is a pile of eyeballs. Apparently, Pastor Miller has killed and gauged all the children's eyes out, as well as his own. Solomon observes the scene in horror, as the rest of the impatient townsfolk storm in and begin wailing at the sight of their dead children. Sarah is among them. She runs up to Henry and begins crying when she finds him dead. She caught Pastor Miller's attention and he moves to kill her. Pastor Miller is now dead, but the townsfolk are even more riled up. At sundown, the townsfolk gather at the meeting house to discuss what to do about the situation, because they're convinced that all this is caused by a devil worshipper and someone is to blame. Caleb, who was humiliated by Sarah Fier the night before, seizes this opportunity to take vengeance on Sarah Fier, by making up a lie about how he saw Hannah Miller and Sarah Fier dance naked in the woods, and lay with the devil. One by one, the townsfolk begin corroborating the story, even though we all know for a fact that they're all lying. Solomon Good tries reasoning with them but fails. In the end, the townsfolk agree that Sarah Fier and Hannah Miller are witches, and they must hang for their crimes. While all of this is happening, Sarah and Hannah are outside, silently watching through a window. 
Caleb sees them and tells the townsfolk to go after them. Sarah and Hannah run for their lives, but Hannah trips and falls. She tells Sarah Fierre to run while the townsfolk violently apprehend her. They beat her, chain her up and display her in front of everyone, while one of the townsfolk preaches that they have to search for Sarah now. Sarah's friends, including Solomon Good, simply watch in horror, dreading what's going to happen but too afraid to say it out loud. The townsfolk begin knocking on every door, searching for Sarah Fierre. Instead of running away from Union, though, Sarah sticks around, unwilling to leave Hannah behind. She sneaks into the courthouse where Hannah is held captive. <laughs> Hannah tells Sarah to flee and save herself, but Sarah refuses. Hannah points out that there's nothing they can do, because it doesn't matter now whether or not they really are working with the devil, the townsfolk think they're guilty and so they shall hang no matter what. Sarah realizes that Hannah is right and since they have nothing left to lose, why not make the accusations true? She tells Hannah that she's going to visit the widow's place and retrieve the devil's book, so she can strike a deal with the devil to save them both. Sarah promises that they'd be able to kiss in broad daylight once all this is over. Afterwards, she goes to visit the widow's house but finds it dark, and the book is gone. Sarah trips and falls to the floor, and the widow is dead. Someone had killed her. Mortified, Sarah Fierre runs to Solomon Good's house to tell him what she saw. She theorizes that someone must have killed the widow to get the book, and use this book to strike a deal with the devil, offering their town in exchange for whatever it is they crave. She swears that she's not a witch, and Solomon tells her he believes her. However, their little moment of solace cannot last, for they started hearing the townsfolk approach Solomon's house, looking for Sarah. In a state of panic, Solomon tells Sarah to go hide in the back room. Solomon faces Caleb while the rest of the men search around the premises. Knowing she's about to get caught if she stays still, Sarah finds a door that leads to the basement pantry and enters it. To her surprise, the room keeps on going, and it leads to an ominous space with a strange symbol on the floor. She also finds a decapitated head of a black goat, and black blood fills the trenches that shape the symbol. And to her horror, she also finds the widow's devil book there. Solomon enters the cave, and Sarah stares at him in shock. It is at this point that she realizes that Solomon Good is the one who made a deal with the devil, and traded the town for his own gain. Solomon Good is also responsible for the cold-blooded murder of the widow, in order to steal the book. And it is also him who saw Sarah and Hannah making love in the woods the other night. Solomon comes clean to her right there, reasoning that he only wants what everybody else wants, power, prosperity and legacy. And if it's going to cost lives, then so be it. He wants Sarah to join him, but Sarah refuses. The pastor slew 12 children. I am nothing like you. Solomon then slams a rock against her temple and tries to apprehend Sarah, but she crawls deeper into the cave. Sarah blindly tries to navigate her way out while he comes after her. She tries scaling the wall, but Solomon yanks her down and pleads her to stop fighting because he's in love with her and wants to be with her. Angry from the pain, he moves to stab her but she blocks her face with her arm, making the knife impale her wrist instead. Her hand gets ripped off, but she manages to slip away. She wraps her bloody nub with a cloth and crawls forward, until she sees streaks of light and begins kicking her way through with the last of her strength. She emerges at the meeting house, and trudges out of the building. But before she gets to say anything, Solomon appears behind her and announces to everyone that he has found the witch, Sarah Fierre. <laughs> at the crack of dawn, Sarah Fierre and Hannah Miller are taken to the hanging tree. They take one last look at each other, seemingly resigned to their unavoidable fates now. If they can't live the rest of their lives together, at least they'll die together, right? But then... No. I confess. Sarah Fierre refuses to let the love of her life die by hanging, so she decides to save Hannah's life by confessing that it is only her who walks with the devil, and that Hannah Miller was only under her wicked spell and therefore blameless. 
Hannah is taken aback and tries denying this, because this is not the truth, but a townsperson covers her mouth to let Sarah speak. He drags Hannah away while she struggles to reach for Sarah. Solomon Good then steps up and begins to wrap the noose around her neck. While he's doing this, Sarah vows to him that she will never stop trying to uncover the truth, even after her death. She shall be a shadow that haunts his legacy for all eternity. Sarah Fierre finally hangs and comes to her tragic demise. Their friends watch in horror, while Hannah Miller wails in agony. She remains by Sarah's dead body long after everyone else leaves. The townsfolk bury Sarah under the hanging tree, but her friends, along with Hannah Miller, sneak away at night to dig up her body, as they feel that Sarah Fierre deserves a proper burial. They take her body to the rock where she and Hannah last made love, and bury her there. As the years pass, Red moss begins growing around where Sarah's body is buried, signifying the strength of her will to uncover the truth, as well as the strength of her love for Hannah Miller. We also learn that the visions people see after touching the bones, are not Sarah's way of telling them that she's angry at them for disrupting her grave, but are instead her attempts to tell them the truth. We now return to year 1994, where Dina is panting heavily in the woods. She has now uncovered the real story behind their town's curse. She then hears the sound of the police siren, meaning that Sheriff Nick Good has arrived at the scene. Dina dashes and pulls Josh into the woods with her, taking him away from Sheriff Good. Josh is palpably confused, so she gives him a quick explanation. Good. He's evil. Sheriff Good enters the woods and starts searching for them. He has already figured out that Dina knows the whole truth and wants to stop her. Dina and Josh sneak away from him and takes off with his car. During their drive, Dina eagerly explains what she just experienced. She tells him that Nick Good's ancestor, Solomon Good, was the one who made a deal with the devil. Over the generations, the first son the Good family would give a name of a shady sider to the devil. Ryan Torres. Then the devil takes over that person, so the person kills and murders. The devil would then feed on the blood of dead shady siders. In turn, the goods get everything they want. He becomes sheriff, his brother becomes mayor. And Sunnyvale, the town they built and live in, gets better, while Shadyside gets worse. Plus, whenever anyone comes anywhere close to uncovering the truth by touching Sarah Fierre's bones, the goods would send their dead killers after them, so they can keep their family secret safe. Dina and Josh return to Ziggy's house and proceed to tell her everything they just learned. Afterwards, Ziggy collapses to the floor, feeling overwhelmed and betrayed because of the past she and Nick shared. She thought Nick Good was a good person. Dina tells her that they need to kill Nick Good to put an end to all this, and Ziggy informs them that she had already called Nick to come over because she thought he could protect them. Knowing that Nick's going to show up at the house soon and that more dead killers than ever are going to come after Dina, they knock the possessed Sam out and pile into the police car. It is at this point that Josh takes out Martin the janitor's business card, and visits his house to ask for his help. Out of my business. Fueled by his dislike for Nick Good, Martin doesn't hesitate before agreeing to help them assassinate the sheriff. He takes them to his place of work, the Shadyside Mall, and begins showing off the highly durable store gates installed at the entrance of every shop. The group get to work and reconvene by the hanging tree after to prepare to face what's to come. They pay their homages to their fallen friends, Arnie, Alice, Cindy, Kate, Simon, and of course, Sarah Fierre. Dina slits her palm, and the group begins to execute their plan. Their plan is to wait for the killers to enter the shops with trails of Dina's blood and then locking them inside. They will then drop a bucket of Dina's blood on Nick Good once he arrives, and then release the killers, so they'll go after him instead. Now, they're waiting for the right time, but... It is Officer Kopinski, along with another officer. They have come to investigate the scene and arrest the group for trespassing. But as he reaches for his comms... One of the killers, the milkman has arrived. The other officer tries shooting him but the milkman barely budges. 
he stabs the other officer to death. The group gets into position, while Dina goes hide. Josh manages to trap the grifter, while Martin traps the milkman. Ziggy traps Skull Mask and then dashes across the room to trap Nightwing. The group then gather behind a pizza counter, and Martin points out that the killers have suddenly stopped groaning and they are oddly quiet. As it turns out, Officer Nick Good has entered the mall. Ziggy comes out and stands in the middle of the room, while Nick Good walks up to her. Their gazes meet and we can see that he still has feelings for her. Ziggy proceeds to go through with the plan, and dumps Dina's blood all over him. It looks green because they're under blue light. Now that Nick is covered in Dina's blood, the rest of the group begin releasing the killers on him. But he takes Ziggy in his grip, and threatens the group to get the killers away from him or Ziggy dies. Ziggy slips away, but the milkman grabs her now that Dina's blood is on her too. Meanwhile, Nick Good struggles against Skull Mask. Unwilling to let Ziggy die, Dina cuts her other palm, so that the killers would leave Ziggy alone. However, Nick Good uses this opportunity to escape. Dina comes after him with a knife in hand while Martin, Ziggy, and Josh distract the killers with Ziggy's shirt that is covered in Dina's blood. Dina follows a trail of blood, recalling Sarah Fierre's memories all the while. She finds the entrance to the cave and jumps in, determined to find and kill Nick Good. Back at the mall, Josh comes up with a brilliant idea. They spray their blood-filled water guns at the killers, so that they'll start attacking each other. Apparently, it works. However, they also discover that Sam has escaped her binds, and is now going after Dina. The four killers are now dead. Josh Martin and Ziggy finally walk out of hiding, only to find that Billy Barker and Ruby Lane have just arrived at the scene. Unfortunately, they've run out of Dina's blood so they have to come up with a new plan. Determined to protect his sister, Josh takes an axe and prepares to face Ruby Lane head on. Dina continues to venture the cave. She finally arrives at the heart, right when Sam tackles and begins choking her. Dina is suffocating but doesn't have the heart to kill her. Instead, she begins begging Sam to remember her. Miraculously, for a split second, Sam does and loosens her grip, giving Dina enough time to knock her unconscious again. Josh struggles against Ruby Lane, until he is saved by Ziggy, who lands a gunshot to Ruby Lane's head. Inside the cave, Dina crawls on the floor while coughing for air. Unfortunately, Nick Good comes up in front of her, holding her knife. He pulls her up and stabs her. Back to the mall, all the fallen killers are starting to rise up again. Ziggy tries shooting at them, but it does very little. The three stand around in fear, and have now run out of ideas. Meanwhile, Dina fights for her life, while Nick Good boasts that after this, he's going to frame her as the culprit behind all this, and blame her for murdering her friends, brother, and girlfriend. Dina glances at the pulsing heart next to them and gets Nick's palm to touch it. Just like what happened to Alice in the previous movie, Nick Good begins seeing visions of all the people killed by his curse. Once he stands up, he begins hearing Sarah Fierre's voice and sees her face. For a brief second, Sarah Fierre possesses Dina and gives her the courage to stab Nick Good right in the eye, effectively killing him. Back in the mall, all the dead killers vanish into a swarm of flies, to the relief of Ziggy, Josh, and Martin. Sam slowly wakes up, and asks if she's alright. Dina shows her that she's been wearing a makeshift armor out of books. As they try to find their way out of the cave, they discover that the list of names engraved on the walls are starting to disappear, as well as the symbol on the floor. They find a door and exit through it. It apparently leads right to Nick Good's very fancy house. As the two make their way outside, they find themselves in the middle of a Sunnyvale neighborhood, where a couple Sunnyvalers stare at them with disgust before entering their car. However, as the car exits the driveway. For the first time in 300 years, Sunnyvale doesn't seem so sunny anymore. The next scene shows a newscaster on TV stating that Nick Good has now been dubbed a serial killer, while his family denies having any knowledge of this. Josh turns off the TV before heading to school with Dina. On the other side of town, Ziggy visits Mrs. Lane. She is about to tell her the truth about what happened to her daughter, Ruby Lane. Dina drops Josh off at school, but tells him that she's skipping for the day and drives away. As it turns out, Dina has set up a date with Sam right by Sarah Fierre's grave. 
They carve her name on the stone in her honor and kiss with passion and delight, fulfilling Sarah and Hannah's dreams of kissing in broad daylight. And with that, the entire Fear Street trilogy comes to an end. Okay guys, that's all the recap for Fear Street 2021. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.